Another week, boys, and another twab. This week at Bungie, we're celebrating our 30th anniversary. As you may have noticed, we held back a lot of what we had planned for the 30th. There were a lot of questions about when the trailer would go live, but we saved it until just a few hours before launch to keep the spoilers to a minimum and the surprise and delight at max volume. If you haven't got a chance to watch it or just want to rewatch it because it's really awesome, here you go. Honestly, it was a dope trailer, fellas. I loved it too because we were already live, so being able to just sit down and watch it with all of you before the event actually dropped on us was pretty hyped. Now, three decades is a long time to be making games. Everyone at Bungie loves getting to create things to entertain our community, and we've had a blast finally watching everyone jump in and experience 30th anniversary this week. Thanks for joining us to celebrate with a ton of new items and experiences in the game. There's cool content to buy with the pack, but everyone is able to participate with plenty of free content to go around. So starting with what's free to all players. The main attraction for the 30th celebration is the new six player activity, Dares of Eternity. The mysterious agent of the nine, known as Zer, has shown up to host the festivities and is joined by the strange but lovable Star Horse. There is a tear in the very fabric of reality that only Zer can perceive. Now you must explore this unknowable space and face untold challenges for Star Horse's entertainment. Only then can you claim the precious rewards. All of this raises more questions than answers, but even Zer can't offer up explanations of this anomaly. Speaking of rewards, we have a whole new lineup of free weapons. This includes the Forerunner, which is a brand new exotic sidearm that uses special ammo and packs a punch. The Full Stop perk gives the sidearm extended range and heavy caliber rounds. Yeah, fellas, we just reviewed this sidearm and it is disgusting. Like in the least, even if you don't purchase the 30th anniversary event, just get on and get this sidearm. We also have the BXR 55 Battler Legendary Pulse Rifle. This new pulse rifle is worthy to take into any fray with a hand-tuned intrinsic perk, the Legacy PR55 frame. Optimized for firing from the hip and an exclusive legendary perk only available on this weapon. Blunt execution rounds. Plus a custom and unique scope. We're actually going to be reviewing this weapon tomorrow. A ton of different roles to get on it. But if you know how the BR behaves inside of Halo, a lot of similarities here with the BXR55. There's also some legendary swords, including the Half Truths. This sword and its mirror image are the only swords able to roll the brand new sword perk Eager's Edge. You gain increased sword lunge distance and immediately after switching to this weapon. Now, I'm sure some of you guys have already seen clips of it, but it is a hell of a lot of lunch. There's also the Retrace Path Legendary Trace Rifle, which is a legendary trace rifle with some unique perks as well. The Wastelander M5 Legendary Shotgun, which is actually the first legendary text mechanica weapon in Destiny 2. It is a compact shotgun and will be familiar to many OGs from Bungie's Marathon era. It's interesting that the foundries are expanding in this way, right? And also the Pardon Our Dust Legendary Grenade Launcher, inspired by the unique visual design Design of Pathways into Darkness. This is a new kinetic breach loaded grenade launcher with some unique perk combinations. Now, as far as patch notes go, update 3.4.0 launched earlier this week with a ton of changes to the game, from weapons to abilities and practically everything in between. With more than 6,000 words of patch notes, there were bound to be a few to slip through the cracks. Here are the updates with what we added to the official notes. So starting with strikes, Lake of Shadows. To bring this boss encounter more in line with other strikes and our modern sandbox gameplay, Graska's health has been significantly increased. Listen, I know everyone already defaults to Lake of Shadows being one of the easier strikes. It's definitely a good one to speedrun, but that final room is an absolute nightmare if you and your fire team can't gun that boss down fast enough. Ads spawn up all over the place, and the reason why many of us invest in doing things like the boom strat or even other methods of high DPS is because we want to kill that boss fast enough before that room gets out of hand. So depending on how much they actually increase Graska's health, this nightfall might just get a hell of a lot tougher. Now, Grandmaster Nightfall Catch-Up Node will be available to all players who have claimed the Conqueror Seal from Week 7 onward. Grandmaster Catch-Up activities will only be accessible if the fire team leader has not yet completed the associated Gilded Triumph. Now, as far as Crucible, fix a map exploit on top of the tree near Mill on the Dead Cliffs. Trials Activity Node now displays potential rewards when playing on a 7-win ticket. 7-win passages now require manual reset before players can purchase a new passage. Fix an issue where Crucible rank displayed an incorrect value in the Crucible intro cinematic after reset. Combat efficiency in the post round now displays overall match efficiency. Respawn timer for Clash, Control, Rumble, and Iron Banner increased from 7 seconds to 5 seconds. Now as far as ritual reputations, you can now reset a reputation with unclaimed materials if there are no unique items in the current resets item list. The number of seasonal resets is now listed on the reputation rewards section of the vendor. Fixed a bug
bug where rank reset dialogues could appear during activities. Now for bounties, fix an issue with the kinetic calibration bounties not being available on the gunsmith. Now, forging the horn. By now, a bunch of you have gotten your hands on Galahorn as part of the 30th anniversary celebration. It's awesome to have this iconic weapon back and its new perk, which extends wolfpack rounds to any guardian in your fire team rocking a non-exotic rocket launcher, which makes this a formidable addition to your arsenal. If you own the 30th anniversary pack, just head over to Shahan in the Cosmodrome to get the quest started. Earlier this week, some of the team behind the return of Galley spoke with Sony PlayStation blog of what it was like to bring it back to the world of destiny check out the story and happy hunting that's actually an interesting article guys i will link it in the description below if you want to read it but it gives you some insight behind the developers and what they did to bring back this legacy of boom now there's some other things such as exotic armors which have been disabled earlier this week we disabled the mechaneers trick sleeve exotic arms as well as the titan icefall mano exotic arms due to issues surrounding potential exploits i know many of you asked this morning why we didn't actually test out mechaneers trick sleeves with the new exotic sidearm forerunner and that's exactly why it's been disabled hopefully they'll be re-enabled here soon as i too am interested in seeing how much damage we can get out of it now as far as the 30th anniversary streetwear bundles prior to collecting an opening zur's resplendent reward package containing the streetwear bundles for each class players should ensure that they have space available in their inventory and the postmaster to receive multiple items players are also encouraged to visit the postmaster after opening the bundles to ensure all items have been successfully collected collected. We are investigating a way for players to reacquire these bundles if they end up getting pushed out of the Postmaster. Now, Forsaken Cypher Pickup. Players who own Forsaken prior to 3.4.0 can pick up their Forsaken Cyphers from the Forsaken section of the Monument to Lost Lights exotic archive in the tower. Now, players should ensure that they have the space in their consumables inventory prior to acquiring their Forsaken Cyphers. Forsaken Cyphers can also be exchanged for Ascendant Shards at the Monument to Lost Lights if players already own all forsaken weapons please keep in mind that players should only attempt to acquire the ascendant shards if they don't need or want to use their forsaken ciphers now starting today players will be able to play all multiplayer content in destiny 2 without being a playstation plus member now this trial will only run from now until december the 20th and it's the perfect time to try out all the exciting multiplayer content destiny 2 has to offer ah all right there you go playstation people now we have a number of known issues here one of them being players are unable to reclaim the strange key if it is deleted or used blocking progress for the magnum opus exotic quest something to keep in mind guys make sure you have room in your inventories to take those things also players who spend their strange coins during the first step of the magnum quest prior to collecting the required seven strange coins will have their coin collection progress reduced by the number of coins spent to avoid this players should not spend their strange coins prior to completing the step of the magnum quest there's also a number of dungeon related bugs which actually results in your game crashing. One of them is if players kill the third servitor and the fallen barrier encounter, but do not launch it, their game would crash, which is kind of funny because my game crashed. Also, if a player dies in the crystal tunnel and isn't revived before the next encounter begins, the player will end up in a death loop. If this happens, the fire team must wipe to regroup. And if players begin a boss encounter before opening a chest, they can't go back and open it up after the encounter ends. Just some notes here, guys, for the dungeon. I will say the dungeon is a a lot of fun i'm a big fan of it especially the master version now as a final note here from cosmo launch weeks are a lot of fun glad to see everyone enjoying the latest content later tonight you should tune into the game awards we will have a little something to show off it's not a huge announcement but worth tuning in if you can pre-show starts at 4 30 p.m pacific on twitch and youtube and if you already have dungeon plans don't worry we will post it on our channels for you it's been an exciting week but we still have more to come the donning will go live next week so get ready to welcome our favorite space grandma back to the tower for more tasty treats. Tower Weather Services are reporting that snow is in the forecast. Love, Cosmo. All right, so the donning is coming next week, fellas. I'm assuming we're going to be getting a trailer probably the day of, as well as showcasing what new rewards are coming next week. We already see some of the weapons in collections. As for the trailer that's coming tonight, we're supposed to be getting a sneak peek at Witch Queen. Although Bungie states right here, it's not a huge announcement, but it is worth tuning into. So we will be live on Twitch at 7 o'clock Eastern leading into this event. I'm bringing pop popcorn so feel free to come by guys we'll be watching for the trailer and i'm hoping bungie's gonna show off some juicy details for witch queen even if it's something small well fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right <laughs>